Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Athar Parvin. This lecture is the most awaited fourth lecture of electronics and communication chapter based on HSTR and CRI syllabus and this lecture would also be useful for all other such teacher entrance exams. Now according to our HSTR syllabus, we had all this portion in this chapter electronics and communication system. Till now we have finished so much portion which I have underlined with the red color and blue color. In this present session we are going to discuss the portion based on this simple circuits, series and parallel combination of cells and bulbs, then circuit symbols of components of circuits, superconductors and fuse. Okay. So before starting this lecture I would like to request you all to Please like and share this lecture as well as all other lectures which I have uploaded for HSTR. And also if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and also share my channel along with other aspirants and your friends. To start with, we should first to know what are the simple circuit components, simple electric circuit components. They are a cell or a battery, connecting wires, bulb and a switch, right? Here I have shown one circuit where you can see one resistor, one switch connected with the battery with the help of the connecting wires. Now this resistor could be anything else. I mean to say that all other electric components except the superconductors, all other electric components, they have certain resistance, right? Very less resistance though, they have it. So, in place of that resistor, I can place any other electric component such as a bulb. So, if I connect bulbs like this and connect it with a switch, then I can use that switch to control this circuit. If I allow the switch to open, then the current will not pass through the wires. If I allow the switch to close, then the current will pass through these wires and the bulb glows. Isn't it? Now, this you can say it as a complete circuit. What is a complete circuit? In a complete circuit, electric current will flow through this circuit and then the bulb blows. You have inserted a switch here in this circuit to control this circuit. So, you can on it or off it as per your wish. Isn't it? Okay, if you on the switch, the bulb is glowing. But still, how does the bulb glow? The bulb it will glow when the filament present in that bulb will get heated up. And when will this filament get heated up? It will get heated up when the current will pass through it. If the filament gets heated up, the bulb glows. Okay. So the main hero here is the switch because it is allowing the current to flow through the bulb, right? So, here we can say that the switch is a very useful thing. For example, you can use the switch to control the circuit. Either you can on the circuit or you can make the bulb glow or you can make the bulb go off by switching off the circuit. Isn't it? You can switch off that circuit by using that switch. And another useful thing which switch does is that, see for example, if you have to repair something, then you can remove the connections first by switching the circuit off isn't it first you switch off the circuit then you touch the wires you are safe right or else you may get shocked so switch can also play as a safety device for you all for any person who is repairing the circuit this is one of the important use of the switch now what is the symbol of this switch here in the first circuit, you can see that the switch, I have uh, drawn this uh, blue color line that will uh, show you the open switch. And if you attach that blue color line with the circuit, it means that the switch is on and the current can flow through the circuit. So this is one symbol of the switch. You have another symbol for a switch. Here you can see that if the switch is open, then you write two open brackets. That's it. If the switch is closed, then you write one dot in those open brackets. Okay. The switch is open means 
that the circuit is incomplete switch is closed means that the circuit is complete and current will flow only in the complete circuit okay so that switch is you can also call it as a plug right we call it as a plug also that plug and one key will be there see for example if you want to charge your mobile what you do you put that plug in that socket and then you hit that button uh, beside that plug right so that is your key okay so that is how you can if you are offing it that means that your switch is open if you are oning it that means that your switch is closed now another thing which we require to make the circuit complete is the wire joint right you need a wire if you are joining that two wire say uh, for example if you are in need of two wires to make one circuit then you need to join those two wires right so to mention that wire joint if see for example if you are connecting some device with a circuit and you have used a wire joint now if you want to show the same thing on a paper you are drawing a circuit diagram in that paper then you have to show that particular place where you have joined the two wires right so that symbol will be your number 5 i have written it here as a wire joint that symbol will be your one perpendicular okay the base and a perpendicular and a dot where those two lines are joining it means that there is a wire joint in that circuit and if you are not joining those wires but still you have two wires in that circuit means the two wires they are crossing over each other then you can just write one d with the other line it is here in number 6 i have shown you the wires crossing without joining this is the symbol for wires crossing without joining okay and what is the symbol for the electric bulb every time you cannot draw this bulb typically while drawing the circuit right it is tough so you have this ulta w okay the ulta w symbol is for electric bulb and of course for, for resistance you must be knowing this is the symbol and there is another type of a resistor used in a circuit where you can change the resistance of that circuit okay that is known as a variable resistance or a rheostat this is the symbol for this rheostat see if you are a physics or electronics student in your bsc then you will be uh, knowing what is this uh, rheostat it will be one uh, spring like thing will be there and then there will be something sliding over it with which you can adjust whatever the resistance you want you can vary okay that is known as a rheostat now this electric current it is the flow of electric charges in an electric circuit what are these electric charges they are electrons right specifically if i want to say what are these electric charges they are electrons so electric current is the flow of electric charges or electrons in an electric circuit but how does they flow how does the current flow is you can compare it with the flow of water electricity it occurs from the moment of electric charge but how it flows is that it flows from positive to negative terminal of the battery it is in the same manner the way the water it flows from higher point to the lower point in the same manner the electric current also it moves from higher potential to lower potential okay this you have to keep in your mind so in short an electric circuit it is the continuous closed path along which current flows from positive to negative terminal of the battery that is from higher potential to lower potential of the battery okay so now we are talking about the cell or the battery right here electric cell you can denote it like this means one big terminal one small terminal the big terminal will be the positive side the small terminal will be the negative side or if you have a battery then you can have many cells in it okay see basically what is a electric cell electric cell it is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy there will be some chemical inside it right it will convert that chemical energy into electrical energy and it will produce very small small amount of electricity but then what is the difference between cell and the battery is that battery is also cell only but uh, you will have group of cells there it will be a collection of two or more cells okay in a battery you will have two or more cells if you have one single cell you call it as a cell only but if you have two or more cells then you call that group as a battery 
okay see actually battery it is the main source of electric current in uh, uh, toys children play toys right toys remote controls torches and all of them okay so the symbol for electric cell i showed you the symbol of the battery will be it is a group of the cells right so it will be like this now i was telling that uh, uh, this battery it can be a main source of electric current in things like toys remote controls and torches right see i will show you this figure this is for a torch see in any torch what you do you remove one cap and you insert batteries inside right so you can insert some two cells together and you you can glow that torch if you switch on the the torch will glow here you can see that uh, in this uh, particular torch or any torch basically these uh, batteries they are connected together okay they are connected together and the switch gets closed when you on it and the circuit gets complete and your light will glow from the torch when there are multiple batteries in the circuit no they can either be connected together in series or parallel or both for example here in a torch you can see that you are connected them in series the negative terminal of one cell is connected to the positive terminal of another cell they are connected those cells in series in the same manner you can connect them in parallel also or you can connect them with the both the series and parallel setup also it depends on what application you need okay now this was about the battery they can ask you any simple question like they asked in a gpst or i think they asked some symbol of a electric circuit components okay for example they can ask a question like this the symbol of the battery used in a circuit is you should be knowing that a battery is is a group of cells so two or more cells will be there you will tick option 2 in case in another option you have a single cell then don't get confused if you have two or more cells then only it is a battery okay now we talked about all these uh, components right the remaining components are ammeter now what is a ammeter ammeter it is a device which can be connected in a circuit and a current can be measured from that circuit in the same manner voltmeter is a device which can be connected in the circuit and you can measure the voltage in that circuit now what is the symbol for ammeter it is just a and a circle over it and it will have a positive terminal and negative terminal you will be knowing which terminal to be connected where in that circuit same is for voltmeter also you will have v and there will be a circle over it and you will have two terminals positive and the negative terminal now another device or a component which is used in a circuit is a fuse you can see the symbol here we will talk more about fuse in this lecture only so stay tuned and try to watch this lecture till the end okay no fuse it is a, such a component which is put in the circuit which is connected in the circuit for safety purpose okay that fuse will protect the humans from the disaster which can be caused due to the electric current how and where and all that we will talk in the lecture in the end okay now there can be another simple question like this they can ask you by ammeter which of the following can be measured of course you use ammeter to measure current so option 3 will be the right answer they can ask you voltmeter they can ask you fuse they can ask any other component from this table okay so this is one thing now before proceeding with our chapter we need to know the concept of ohms law what is a ohms law see even in gpst at time also we were discussing much about ohms law and i am sure that uh, everyone of you at least you will have one slight idea about what is a ohms law ohms law means it is one law which describes about the voltage and current flowing through the circuit and it says that voltage and current are related they are directly proportional to each other and if you remove the proportionality constant you will have v is equal to ir where r is a resistance okay so it will become v is equal to ir to remember the uh, statement that v is equal to ir and there will be interrelations among these three uh, quantities right so for that we make a triangle like this and you makes this division and the multiplication symbol like this with this you can know that v is equal to ir or i is equal to v upon r or r is equal to v upon i 
in these three quantities if any two quantity is given you can easily find the third quantity for example if you have a question like this calculate potential difference across a conductor of resistance 5 ohms to pass a current of 1.5 amperes through it ohms is a unit for resistance ampere a it is a unit for current potential difference means nothing but voltage now you know that v is equal to ir from ohms law right here r is given and i is given you can easily find v just to substitute i is 1.5 into r is 5 it will become 7.5 volts v is volts which is the unit of voltage or potential difference okay so this is how you can do so we use this concept of ohms law in entire of this chapter means uh, in entire of this lecture this particular lecture we use the concept of this ohms law and of course you have one full chapter on uh, electricity right in that also of course ohms law will be the basic uh, idea which uh, you will build in advance okay in that chapter also also along with ohms law we will have to recall another concept which we call as a electromotive force actually in gpstr time i had uh, made the lectures on current electricity in hindi actually at that time so when i take the electricity chapter again i will try to explain all the classes in english again so that it will be benefited to more and more aspirants of uh, uh, all the teacher entrance exams okay coming back the electromotive force it is nothing but potential difference okay the potential difference which is maintained by any ideal battery it is called electromotive force at that time also i had told that the force the word force has nothing to do with the emf actually but then it has it is a traditional name for this potential difference at that time somehow they have given the name as electromotive force and that only they are maintaining till now but the uh, fact is that the electromotive force has nothing to do with force okay you have that word there that's it okay the electromotive force can also be abbreviated mm. the electromotive force or simply emf it is nothing but the potential difference and what is potential difference it is nothing but the work done in taking charge q around complete circuit now if we talk about the potential difference in the battery which i have shown here in this diagram actually in this diagram you can see many types of cells batteries and all that i am talking about the bigger box that is a basic battery on which i am talking right now it will have two rods those rods are known as electrodes and also it will have chemical in it it is known as electrolyte okay these electrodes and electrolytes they become responsible for production of current in this battery now electrodes they will have one resistance and electrolyte also will have one resistance basically the electrodes and electrolyte these two things they become the factors on which the emf will depend now as i told you electrode will have one resistance which you denote it with capital r that will be the resistance of that entire circuit means outside the battery that will be the resistance capital r but then the electrolyte will also have one small resistance that uh, resistance is inside the battery right that's why we call it as an internal resistance you denote it by small r now with the entire setup what will be the total resistance it should be the resistance of the electrolytes plus the resistance of the electrodes isn't it so that will be your total resistance also what will be the voltage drop if it happens you apply ohms law v is equal to ir and then also you will have this total resistance which is capital r plus small r now again apply ohms law you know that v is equal to ir right with that you can calculate the current i is equal to v upon r but that r is actually total resistance okay and the voltage is nothing but the emf now so current for this battery will be equal to e which is emf upon total resistance which is capital r plus small r with this i can easily tell that the emf across that circuit will be equal to capital i into r plus r capital r plus small r so this formula we are going to use it in this lecture also so it's better you note it down it is nothing but ohm's law it is nothing but v is equal to ir but in place of v you will have emf and in place of just resistance r you will have another small resistance added up 
okay so this was all about the electromotive force now we are ready to discuss all other topics based on that portion of electronics based on the uh, cells and bulbs connected in series and parallel and all those st stuff okay so let's start with the combination of cells in series first we will talk about cells then we will move to the combination of bulbs okay then we will move to fuse that is how i planned now what is series combination of cells series combination of cells means you will have set of batteries they uh, you will connect to all those batteries in series how you will connect you will connect it in this way you will have positive terminal of one cell connected to negative terminal of next cell or anode of one cell connected to the cathode of the next cell here overall emf for that battery it will be the algebraic sum of all individual cells okay all those individual cells which are connected in series so you can say that here uh, net emf will be equal to e1 plus e2 you have two cells right if you have n cells it will become e1 plus u2 till en you are just adding up till en and then uh, by chance if you are connecting them in a opposite manner if the cells they are opposing each other then you will have to subtract that net emf okay that is a very rare case right now just remember that your two cells can be connected in series and you can have emf the net emf is equal to algebraic sum of the individual emfs of each cell okay now another thing which you have to know is that if you have n identical cells say for example you have group of cells which are connected in series but and all those cells are similar they all those cells are identical and you have n such cells okay at that time what you do instead of writing e1 plus e2 plus e3 dash dash dash, dash till en what you do you just write it as n into e n is the number of cells into emf of each cell it is going to be same right and then what will be the internal resistance the equivalent internal resistance also it will be equal to n into r because internal resistance also it becomes the algebraic sum of the internal resistance of each cell here means small r will become r1 plus r2 plus r3 dash dash, dash, dash till rn so if you have n cells you will have rs is equal to n into r okay here this is the diagram you can see it here it will be like this right now with all these things in mind you can find that the main current will be equal to apply ohms law v is equal to ir or i is equal to v upon r now in place of v you will have emf but you have n cells that's why you will write ne in place of emf and in place of small r you write nr because capital r is not going to change right that is the resistance outside the cell that is not going to change but the resistance inside the cells will change because you have many cells those many cells could be could be n cells so you are writing n into r so you can have this formula that the current from each cell when those cells are connected in series is equal to n e upon r plus n r okay now let's talk about parallel combination what will happen if you have this parallel connection among these cells here anode of one cell will be connected to anode of other cell means all the anodes will be connected to one point only and all the cathodes will be connected to one point okay so a set of batteries are set to be connected in parallel when positive terminals are connected together and negative terminals are connected together okay the combination it is known as the parallel batteries here what will happen for the potential difference in the first two terminals you will have same potential difference and in the second terminals you will have same potential difference and if you have n identical parallel cells at that time what you will do because we are telling that the potential difference will be same you will no need to add the emfs because it is same right why you will add it will become same it will not be changing and what about the equivalent internal resistance equivalent internal resistance you apply the formula for the parallel resistors which we used to calculate 
वन अपॉन आर टोटल इज इक्वल टू वन अपॉन आर वन प्लस वन अपॉन आर टू प्लस वन अपॉन आर थ्री लाइक दट यू गो टिल वन अपॉन आर एन एट दट टाइम यू गेट दैट वन अपॉन आर इज इक्वल टू एन अपॉन आर और आर विल बी इक्वल टू आर अपॉन एन मीन्स टोटल इंटरनल रेसिस्टेंस विल बी इक्वल टू आर अपॉन एन नाउ वॉट विल बी दिन करेक्ट इट इज एज सिंपल एज दट just you substitute r upon n in place of r and you don't need to write n with the amu because it is going to be same now one more thing which i wanted to tell you that there are some advantages of a series combination of cells like uh, you can easily find or you can easily identify the damaged cells okay that is one advantage but you will have another advantage that if one cell is damaged then whole connection will get affected in series but uh, in parallel that is not going to happen if one cell is damaged also other cells will be working okay if one of the battery in the system it will fail to operate still the remaining batteries will be working and it will provide the power that is one advantage for this parallel combination and in parallel combination current delivered by the battery it will be equal to sum of currents delivered by each cell okay each cell there we were adding this emf right here we will add the current now overall moral of the story is that in a series circuit current will remain same and voltage will divide you can also have one voltage law known as kirchhoff's law the kirchhoff's voltage law it says that the algebraic sum of the voltage becomes zero if the circuit is connected in series okay this is also known as law of conservation of energy and in a parallel circuit current divides and voltage remains same here kirchhoff's current law will apply it states that the algebraic sum of the current becomes zero in parallel circuit okay so you can have a simple question like this batteries are generally connected in usually batteries they are connected in series why because we can obtain the desired voltage because voltage will add up once they are connected in series right that's why they are always connected in series see friends i'm going to solve more than i think around 30 questions all mcqs based on this uh, syllabus for hstr and it will be very very useful for cries also so please stay tuned in and also try to make the notes and uh, watch the lecture carefully and believe me this lecture would be more than enough for your hstr and cris preparation you will not need to study from any other book also okay so this lecture is a such useful and very important lecture and this is more than enough whatever i am discussing in this lecture is more than enough for your competitive exams okay okay moving on next question five cells of emf 2 volts each are connected in parallel combination then the output voltage of this combination will be see without seeing any other option simply take two volts why because emf is going to be same in parallel combination isn't it in that numerator we didn't write n with the emf right we just wrote e because in parallel combination emf will be same for the entire circuit okay okay next question choose the correct statement regarding the combination of two similar cells having equal emf and internal resistance here you have to say that which one is the correct statement which is describing the combination of two same cells which are having equal emf and equal internal resistance i think option 4 will be the right answer which says that both emf and internal resistance it will be maximum in case of series combination it, all other options are wrong here okay next question find the equivalent internal resistance and potential of the given circuit they have given you one circuit here the cells are connected in series you can see here you have to find the equivalent internal resistance and potential of the given circuit each cell will have its own internal resistance right that we denote by small r now you can easily find it actually see equivalent emf means you have to find the algebraic sum of the emfs of each individual cell you have three cells here so each cell is having emf e so add them and they are same right they are c e e e is there means they are same cells so it is 3e in the same way 
because the cells are connected in series their internal resistance also will be in series right so just you add them up if it was in parallel then you would have done it the other way you will have to take that uh, one upon r and thing and do is it it okay here equivalent internal resistance it will become 3r so 3e and 3r option 3 will be the right answer next question five identical cells of internal resistance is 1.5 ohms each are connected in parallel combination find the equivalent internal resistance of the cells see there are five identical cells they are connected in parallel connected in parallel means you can find the equivalent resistance using this formula r upon n this internal resistance is given as 1.5 ohms and n is number of cells right how many cells are there five cells are there so 1.5 upon 5 will give you 0.3 ohms so option 4 will be the right answer next question four cells of emf 1.5 volt each are connected in parallel combination of cells then output voltage of the parallel combination is see again same question parallel combination means same emf right then why do you need to calculate anything you will have 1.5 volts only isn't it we have this funda right so option 2 will be the right answer okay this was all about the combination of cells in series and parallel let's talk about bulbs you now see bulbs it is similar like the resistance okay same thing see bulb is not a superconductor right in a superconductor you will have zero resistance bulb is a conductor some minute resistance will be there only okay so in place of resistors you can put bulbs in place of bulbs you can put resistors okay same thing what all you do for series and resistors same thing you do for bulbs also so here let's first talk about a combination of resistors we will recall all that then we will come to bulbs okay it will be easy for us see here series bulbs means you are connecting these bulbs in series here you will have a one battery one switch here the same thing which we did for cells even in parallel also you will have the same thing okay but one thing only you have to remember is that current will be similar in series and voltage will be similar in parallel this you have to remember now in most circuits you will have more than one device that will receive electric energy right these devices they are commonly connected in circuit in series or parallel way when connected in series they form a single path for electron flow between the terminals of the battery and when connected in parallel they form branches each of which is a separate path for the flow of electrons so all this already have discussed right now let's go for resistors directly these are the series resistors these are the parallel resistors same like in cells series means you will have the end connected to the starting point okay this is a trick actually series means you have s and d the starting point and the ending point they are connected together that is series here you can have uh, equivalent resistance is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 and dash dash dash, dash. you can use ohms law and you will know that i is equal to v upon r here the same thing again i will tell you current will be same and it will follow one direction but voltage will be different so you will have to find the algebraic sum of the voltage in series resistors combination in parallel what you will do in parallel also you will apply i is equal to v upon r but to find r equivalent you will do 1 upon r equivalent is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 dash dash dash, dash till 1 upon r1 r any will do it here no potential difference will be same across each resistor but current will be different okay i have told you many times this you have to keep in your mind this is very very important trick to even solve the numericals based on these okay so here you will find the algebraic sum of the currents in series combination you are finding the algebraic sum of the voltage and this funda is also same for series resistors and parallel resistors okay now if you have a question like this in parallel circuit the current is you know that the current will be unequal because it's a parallel circuit right another question can be adding more bulbs to a circuit with one battery would be it will make them sharper it means it will it will glow but it will be little less brighter it will not become very dim but compared to brighter it will become less brighter so you can say that they will be little sharper when compared to the brighter it will be the brightness will become little less okay actually this is little bit confusing question you have two options which will confuse it, they, it is one is make them sharper make them dimmer see in case you don't have this sharper thing in the options 
then you can take this answer as make them dimmer also that will all also be the right answer okay next question in series if one bulb goes out others will of course it will turn off because in series combination you have same current isn't it in that series combination either it is a cell or a bulb if one thing spoils the entire circuit will spoil next question in a series circuit which of the parameters remain constant across all circuit elements such as resistor capacitor and inductor of course it should be current right in series circuit we have same current next question if there are two bulbs connected in series and one blows out what happens to the other bulb in series bulb what will happen the other will also stop glowing so option b should be the right answer next question if two bulbs are connected in parallel and one bulb blows out what happens to the other bulb if it is in parallel means no problem if one goes out no the other will still be glowing so you will have a option b will be the right answer next question voltage across a series resistor circuit is proportional to you have this ohms law right v is equal to ir so it will be proportional to the value of the resistance itself next question many resistors connected in series will if the resistors are connected in series means you will have a current will be same and then you will have voltage which will divide proportionally among all the resistors so option a will be the right answer next question in a dash circuit the total resistance is greater than the largest circuit in the circuit yeah of course it should be series right option a should be the right answer because no in a series circuit will only you will have total resistance greater than any largest resistance whatever it is because you will add up right r equivalent will be equal to r1 plus r2 plus dash 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 till r and if you have n resistors isn't it next question in a dash circuit the total resistance is smaller than the smallest resistance in the circuit of course it should be parallel circuit right because there what you do you do the reciprocal and you find the answer right 1 upon r total will be equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus dash 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 till 1 upon r n right so here in parallel circuit only the total resistance will be smaller than even the smallest resistance given in the circuit okay now let's talk about superconductor we know actually if you are a gpst student then you will be knowing i have talked many times about the superconductor in my youtube channel superconductor it is a uh, material with zero resistance but then it will show this zero resistivity only at very very low temperatures for example mercury is a superconductor but it will show superconductivity only at very low temperature as low as temperature less than 4.2 kelvin okay this is known as a superconductor so this is the speciality of the superconductor it will show the superconductivity at very low temperature and that low temperature will be less than one particular temperature known as critical temperature here we are talking about mercury right for mercury critical temperature will become 4.2 kelvin less than this critical temperature only that mercury will show up to be a superconductor okay so this is the graph you have to remember this is graph the pink curve which shows the superconducting graph okay now another thing about the superconductivity is that see if you have a superconductor no at very low temperature if the material is becoming superconductor there no magnetic lines they will be rejected they will be expelled from that material okay inside that superconducting material that magnetic field will be zero this is the most famous and important speciality of a superconductor okay so magnetic flux or magnetic lines of forces they will be expelled or they will be rejected they will be pushed away from the superconducting material this phenomenon is known as misner effect m e i s s n e r misner effect it is named after the scientist who discovered this phenomenon okay remember misner effect okay we will talk more about the superconductor um based on these multiple choice questions okay it will become easy for you see for example the question is the phenomena of a superconductor was first discovered by actually this superconducting phenomena it was first discovered by the famous scientist kamerling ohns okay remember his name he was the one who discovered superconductors and when did he discover he discovered it in 1911 actually he was measuring resistivity of mercury 
below 4.2 kelvin only he was measuring the resistivity then suddenly he came to know that the resistivity it is becoming zero means resistance becoming ideally zero okay that's how he found that it is a superconductor few more details about superconductors we can have from these questions in superconductivity the conductivity of a material becomes we know it right in superconductivity conductivity becomes infinite and resistance becomes zero okay and we were talking about the critical temperature in question number 25 we have it the temperature at which conductivity of a material becomes infinite it is called critical temperature tc okay another question under what temperature does the resistivity of mercury completely disappear you know it by this time right it should be 4.2 kelvin next question superconductor nowadays found their applications in various fields this is due to the fact that they they generate regions free from magnetic field they push magnetic field away okay now let's talk about fuse i have put a diagram of a fuse here fuse looks like this see actually fuse as i told you in the starting of this lecture fuse it is an electrical safety device it will protect us from the hazards from the accidents okay and actually it protects the circuit from getting destroyed okay from short circuiting one switch is used before this uh, equipment in the circuit okay that will be connected in series combination and one important component with which this electrical fuse it is made is a metal wire or a metal strip it will melt when excess current will flow through it thus that is the idea behind this fuse that fuse wire it is usually it is made up of tin alloys that will have high resistance and low melting point means it can bear much resistance but then if it will have little heat more heat than usual it will get melted means that switch will come down okay this will help or this will protect the device by stopping or interrupting the current actually see in all of our houses we will have it i will talk more on it you will understand if i talk the working principle of electric fuse you will understand everything see this working principle of this electric fuse no it is based on two factors only one is the flow of current in that loop and the second one is the heating effect of the current okay electric current it can flow through a conductor only when the circuit is formed is complete right in a complete circuit only electric current will flow if there is a break in that loop no electric charges will not flow isn't it it will become an incomplete circuit see this diagram you can see in all of our houses we will have this this is only known as electric fuse see if see uh, for example if you are having some short circuit at your home say for example you are using any uh, press you are ironing your clothes okay some high voltage happened and some short circuit happens at that time only current will go only in your home means power will be cut off only at your home you go and ask your neighbors they will have electric power okay you will ask no current gaya kya aapke ghar mein then they will say no no hamare ghar mein to current hai but current sirf apne ghar mein gaya hai that is because one fuse will be there in the mains near our door it will be there only that fuse it will burn that metal it will dissolve or melt and it will fall down it will switch off the entire current of our home if you go and make that switch on again current will come back power will come back in your home okay this is what fuse is i hope you all understood what i am trying to tell now what are the uses of this fuse why should we have it first is that it will act as a barrier between electric circuit and the human body it will save us from any electric shocks next is it will prevent the device failure due to faulty circuit operation see your press it would have spoiled if you don't have fuse it would have burnt it would have some sparks and it would have spoiled but then fuse saved it okay and then fuse it will prevent short circuits it will prevent overload and blackouts it will prevent damage that is caused due to mismatched loads sometimes it will happen right there will be voltage sometimes some one phase is there another phase is not there in your home all these things happens right so all this is controlled by the fuse okay now we can have few multiple choice questions based on fuse and then we'll end up our class the question is the che cheapest form of protection in housing circuit is of course by now you know it right it is a fuse next question the primary function of a fuse is to 
of course it is to protect the appliance protect the line and all that also but the primary function is the main function the main function of the fuse is actually to prevent excessive current from flow through the circuit okay it is controlling the flow of current it doesn't allow current to flow excessively in the circuit when the current flows excessively then your fuse that wire within the fuse it will melt down and the power cut will be there at your home okay next question fuse wire should possess of course your fuse wire it should process high specific resistance and low melting point because little bit heat is also increased in your housing circuit it will sense and that wire in the fuse will get melt then only your switch off will be there okay and entire power cut will be there at your home that's why it should have high specific resistance and low melting point next question fuse are used in circuit for a and b of course not only for uh, human safety but also for equipment safety you use fuse next is uh, best practicable material for fuse wire is yes it should be tin actually okay tin should be there in whatever option you have tin you tick that answer that will be the right option next question fuse is a device which is used for of course it is used for protection right option a is the right answer okay okay friends so this was all about uh, this part of electronics i will try to finish this electronics and communication chapter in another lecture one more lecture i will need and i will finish this entire chapter i had a huge huge demand of viewers you all wanted uh, me to continue this chapter that's why i stopped optics and i made lecture on this so i hope uh, i have really helped you with this lecture and uh, please as usual please do like share and subscribe to my channel and uh, today's assignment yeah these are the questions of today's lecture please do answer these questions in the comment section i'll be very happy to know your answers okay that's it all the best keep working hard see regarding this hstr notification no all are asking i also don't know actually i, I expected in july i really don't know why they are not releasing the notification uh, anyway but let us hope that notification will come as soon as possible let us not stop our preparation friends i can see that many of you you have stopped watching the lectures i am scared because maybe you all stopped preparing for this exam see please don't do that sooner or later you will get notification okay within one or two months two months is maximum i am expecting it by july last week or in mid of the august you may get the notification i am expecting so please don't stop preparing okay either it is cris either it is tet or hstr please keep your preparations on and don't lose hopes okay friends all the best thank you bye